Hello guys, welcome to Insta Electronics. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how you can troubleshoot your electronic mosquito bat or fly sweater like this one on your own. Now if you don't know, one of the most popular videos of my channel is my very first video which was about the same thing, the electronic mosquito bat and how it works and everything. And Ever since I made that first video, I was thinking about making a separate video just to tell you guys how you can repair one of the, these bats on your own. It is actually pretty simple uh, in construction and in troubleshooting and in repairing things. These mosquito bats are really not that expensive but still people are trying to repair it and I do sur service these mosquito bats a lot even though these are cheaper. These are getting cheaper day by day but still people are trying to repair it and I will get I'm getting a lot of these things to be repaired and these are all the circuit boards that I salvaged from these mosquito these are these are all works there is nothing wrong with the operation of these circuit boards but there is one single fault one single problem that is not worth servicing if that is the problem why your mosquito bat is not working then it's the best thing that you can do is salvage what you can as you can see over here and throw away the rest of the bat and i will explain about that problem at the end of this video but now let's begin by using a block diagram of how this thing works now i'll try to make this video as short as possible and also at the same time as informative as possible also now just for the reference i'm taking this one over here Let's just keep this thing right there. So, since I do service a lot of mosquito beds, I came across a lot of circuit boards also. And there are two type of boards that I came across most of the times. And in fact, 90% of the boards that I came across has this configuration over here. The other one is just a thing that it does not use as a rechargeable battery. Now, let me just zoom out and let me show you this. The most common type of bats available in India are these electro electronic ones with recharging rechargeable batteries built into it, built onto it. And there are other bats that uses the disposable uh, batteries like the uh, standard double batteries, those lithium, not lithium but the alkaline batteries. They all have a similar circuit with just some little bit of difference. Now being the most popular circuit is the rechargeable one let me begin with that one right here so as you can see the basic block diagram has only three components in it so this is actually uh, from left to right this is how everything is arranged in this board and in most boards as well so uh, this circuit has three components the main section that comes in is first introduced to a full bridge rectifier which is this section over here the rectifier uses a capacity dropper circuit to limit the current and to reduce the voltage to a more manageable level which is the most popular way of recharging the mosquito bats you know there is no need for expensive transformers and everything but this is the most popular way but being a direct AC related component this is not isolated at all from the main AC main side. In fact, the entire thing is actually very, very dangerous when it is in operation because the entire section, until the inverter section, is referenced to AC mains in a way. And on the other side, this is from this point onward, onwards, it is the high voltage output side, and this up to here is the low voltage input side. In fact, this is the this is actually low it's not low but you get the point anyway the AC mains comes into the full bridge rectifier of course if you if you watched the electro booms channel you will recognize the full bridge rectifier and the AC mains is rectified using this set of diodes and the capacitor dropper and it is used to recharge the battery now the troubleshooting has to begin with the first to the right 
to, from the left to the right in series. Now let's talk about the main points that you need to consider when troubleshooting. Troubleshooting begins from the AC input side onwards. If your bat does not light, so there is, an, there is always a light in the bat that turns on when the switch is pressed. And if your bat is not doing that, then the first thing you have to do is check the battery. In fact, if your bat doesn't work, the first ever thing you have to check is the battery. Because in most the cases, in around 75% of the cases that I attended, the battery is a culprit. So in the olden days, they used the NICAD or NIMH cells, two of them connected in series and across, connected across these two points as the battery. And nowadays, the most popular way of connecting a battery, using a source of a battery is the lithium, sorry, the lead acid battery like this one. Now the troubleshooting has to begin with the battery itself. Now you have to test the battery for the voltage and keep in mind the first point you have to keep in mind when you are trying to troubleshoot a battery is always test the battery using a load. Do not measure the battery voltage directly with no loads attached to it because the multimeter that you are going to use has a very high, volt, high impedance resistor across the terminals and because of that the battery will always show the maximum voltage of what it can deliver but in fact if the battery is dead or it is broken inside it will still show a voltage in the multimeter but when you connect a load it will drop to zero volts so the best way to check for a battery complaint for a battery faulty battery is to attach a load to it a bulb will work even an led bulb will work and attach an led bulb or something to it these batteries are normally 3 to 4 volts so connecting an LED directly to it will not harm it will not cause any harm and by attaching a load measure the voltage across it if the voltage remains the same and the bulb is still going on then that confirms that the battery is ok it just confirms the battery is ok it will not tell you anything about the capacity of the battery how bad is it if it's ok then it's ok that's it the another way to find out whether the battery is faulty is when you're no longer getting enough time after a successful recharge of it like your battery is turned off every now and then once even after doing a full charge of the battery that clearly indicates the battery is good but it is not having the proper capacity it's time to change the batteries then so those are the two popular uh, reasons for a battery to fail Either it can cause an internal short circuit which uh, can result in no output or the battery capacity ran out and it will reduce the operation time. So that's that. So let's assume the battery is keeping up but still the uh, charging, is still the battery is not operational then the culprit has to be the charging section. Because if there is no input current going to the battery there is no way it can be charged. So the first thing you have to check for is the capacitor. It's really easy to check. It will be in a blown state. This is a perfectly fine capacitor, but for any reasons, if it goes wrong, it bangs and everything was kind of exploded looking. You can easily spot it out. And in the normal cases, in majority of cases that I attended, the diodes were fine. There is no issue with the diodes. It's just the capacitor always. And because they, they are not using the accelerated capacitors, it is much uh, the chances are really high for these to explode and if that is hap that has happened then change it try to recharge the battery and see if the uh, bat works starts working back again moving on that's the first section complete we are now completed the diodes the rectifiers and the battery now the second thing that can fail if the if up until the battery everything until the battery is okay then the next thing you have to check for is the inverter circuit now here the battery is connected through a switch uh, to the inverter. Now in most of the cases you will have two switches. This is the master on off switch and this is the momentary switch just to give it that sap. These two are in series of course. The inverter circuit consists of this transistor and the switching transformer over here. 
The most common transistors that they use are the D882 as in this case I don't know whether you can see it yes you can the D882 or they use the D968 these are the two common transistors that which is found in almost in all uh, circuit boards that I came across and these two are actually general purpose low voltage high current uh, transistors the 882 can hand handle up to 3 amps without heat sink but it is recommended for uh, heat sink for continuous operation and also the D968 can handle up to 5 amps uh, without heat sink but for prolonged operation you need a heat sink and the most common failure point in the inverter is of course the transistor now these are under normal cases these are all NPN transistors so checking it will be fairly easy you need a multimeter that has the diode checking available if the diode checking is available this is the NPN transistor you can use the positive lead the red lead attached to the base of a transistor then use the black one to probe across the collector and emitter and see if the diode contacts if it contacts it will show a reading on the uh, around 0.6 like 600 something or 700 something reading on the display and if the transistor is faulty it will either show nothing or it will show it will beep indicating a short circuit or it will show zero which indicates the uh, open circuit transistor now in a case like this one it is okay to test the transistors in circuit itself you don't have to take it out to test it but it is actually recommended to take out the transistor before testing but it's okay with this case the transistor has a feed the transformer has a feedback winding and a primary winding and a secondary winding so it looks like this if you if i focus on it it looks like that the primary winding then has a feedback winding over there and everything has a common uh, secondary winding which is a high voltage winding over here so if you're Full bridge rectifier is okay and if your battery seems okay then the next thing you have to check for is the transistor. In my case I use uh, sometimes I use the uh, multimeter itself or I will use the dedicated transistor checker like this one. You can see this is my homemade transistor checker as it's on <laughs> it's on a prototyping board but I will make a separate video about this one. It's a complete solution for transistor checking. So I use that or sometimes simply this one. Okay, so um, moving on, that is the transistor part, which is the switching inverter main component. And sometimes, the most of the times, the transformers are okay. Trans transformers are not something that easily blows up. But you have you can check for continuity between the coils since it has three uh, set of holes you can probe the pins two of them will be the primary two of them will be the uh, feedback and the last two will be the output you can check for continuity between them and if the transistor is faulty you can just change the transistor and put everything back together and see if it's working fine if that seems okay then the next thing you have to do is check for the continuity in the transformer okay since the inverter circuit makes use of the transistor and the transformer to work in a sync, if it loses the feedback or if anything happens to the tracks, uh, it will cause problems. Now, a lot of cases, as you can see, I don't know whether you can see it or not, this circuit board has a wax coating uh, on the secondary side. It's a really light coating over here. Just on the side over here, there is a wax coating that is to prevent creepage, creeping of the electrical current through the tracks. So, yeah, the inverter blocks is over here. You have to test the transistor for it. And the last thing you can test, if that trans change in the transistor fixes your bat, then that's it. If not, then the last thing you have to check for is the diodes in this section over here. Now usually these transistors, these the output of the transformer will be around uh, 200 to 300 volts, and sometimes I have measured uh, around 600 volts in, but that uh, transformer does not have 
a lot of multiplier sections at the output they just had a single volt stage voltage multiplier and depending on the type of depending on the amount of uh, voltage that is at the output the voltage on this secondary set of transformer will be low for instance if the if you look at the trans uh, capacitor at the output side you can actually see a rating or in this case there is nothing on it let me just find one that has a rating okay let's see let's say this one it has a rating of around 2 kilo volts at the output which means that this can handle up to 2000 volts and that indicates the voltage around hill here will be around uh, two times less than that because it is it uses a two stage voltage multiplier so around uh, like mm, 300 to 400 volts in this case so yeah uh, if the inverter section seems okay if the transistor seems okay if the continuity transformer has continuity then you have to look for the continuity of these diodes if these diodes are open then the uh, voltage multiplier will not work and the circuit will not get any output at the mesh circuit so uh, and in some cases I have seen some cases that where the capacitor the large storage capacitor at the end has gone bad because you know this uses a very high frequency high voltage low current at the output section and that high frequency high voltage can actually create a lot of problem a lot of stress on these capacitors these are not rated for those high frequency operations but not these one these are not rated for high frequency operation so it creates a lot of stress on these and that's enough to cause uh, a complete failure of the output section even though the failure of this component will not affect the killing uh, it will not affect the entire operation but it will, it will significantly reduce the killing power of uh, the bat normally if you uh, have a fully charged perfectly fine bat when you and a fly gets in between it you will get a popping sound with a flash with an arc forming and things like that but if this output capacitor is really bad if it has problems if it short circuit internally instead of just seeing that pop the fly or the insect will just slowly burn that is that is what happens and because the reason why it happens is because this is connected directly across these two mesh over here so when a fly sits in between it is actually short circuiting the output and that is creating a lot of stress on this capacitor which it is not designed to handle that much that is the other way of this uh, circuit fails so if you have a mosquito bat that has less killing power the possible suspect is this capacitor over here and also the battery if the battery does not have enough juice to pump out that can reduce the killing power or this capacitor here if that is damaged that can also reduce the killing power so we now have talked about the full bridge rectifier over here the battery section over here the inverter section over here and the voltage multiplier over here so you have to begin from the left side which is the AC input side over here check the battery check the transistor check the continuity of the transformer coils check for the continuity on the diodes finally if you have less killing power the possible suspect is this over here now these are all the major things that you have to consider now moving on let's shift the board upside down I mean flip the board and talk about this side here now if every single component is this in this thing is okay you will still see the bad will not work I mean, I mean, in this case, let me show you a board that has a problem. See how oh, this one? I have written limited output over here. This particular board, there is, as you can see, you can clearly see the wax coating over here to prevent the creepage of high frequency electrical noise. And in this board, what happens is that every single component in this thing functions perfectly. There is the input section is okay, the transistor is okay, transformer, the output section, everything is fine except this thing has dry solder yeah this thing has a really dry solder and I'm, I'm having a hard time focusing on it but the soldering thing let me just see yeah there it is as you can see the soldering job on this thing is completely ridiculous even we're getting some corrosion over here like if you can see so the main concept the main suspect of a dead uh, uh, mosquito bat if everything else is fine 
you have to look underneath and see if there is any corrosion like this one here or any other corrosion or anything which could lead to a dead solder or a bad solder dry solder and that indicates the if, if, even if everything is okay the bad solder the dry solder can kill your circuit in this case this entire uh, track is corroded and there is no way solder can uh, do a, the best of what it can do on here so in these cases it's much better to just throw the circuit away you can actually bypass the track and use a wire but it is not worth the hassle so that is the second last thing that you have to consider dry soldering of components now in a case like this what I always do is I just cut the track and I use a wire to solder everything properly and I will use a fresh coat of solder on each single joint to give it that to give it some new life and see if everything works fine okay so now we have talked about everything that can happen to a circuit board electronically now there is one thing which I mentioned in the beginning of the video there is one thing that can happen to your fly swatter to a mosquito bat that can just result in throwing away your bat which is com you know it, it, that particular problem can be uh, solved but it is not worth doing it as you can already see I'm trying to solve it but it is not worth doing it and that particular thing is the dielectric breakdown yes that is one big dead end for repairing these mosquito bats you can fix it by methods like inserting some more dielectric material in fact any material that is plastic or paper to the problematic areas but it is not worth worth it you know these circuits are operating at very high voltage voltage is around 2000 volts at very high frequencies and at voltages at very high frequencies can actually create dielectric breakdown of components you know the output let's say this the output of these two terminals are connected across the mesh of the fly set ahead it actually consists of two three layers the top and bottom layers are the ground and the inner layer is the live terminal so it, this also has two terminals live and the ground so what happens is that there is some kind of space uh, spacing between the live and the ground terminal and also there is a lot of spacing available in the edge side also but if you open one of these we can actually see each individual st string of these mesh is like uh, you know nails sticking poking around at the ends and those actually creates pressure points you know it creates plasma and can smell the ozone if you if you uh, ever try to turn this thing on near your nose you can actually smell the ozone that is that is forming from the sharp edges from the sides so what happens is that when these high frequency high voltage things that are operating if you keep the keep everything pressed continuously you can actually hear it i think the high frequency squeal so what happens is that the uh, electricity is actually creating pressure points across each of these points and those pressure points will result in increased conductivity between these inner layer and the outer layer which creates a short circuit you know when things are coming closer and closer usually these are kept at a distance but when the when a high frequency voltage is applied across it they, they will try to create a conductive layer in between so which makes them Phys not physically but it appears that it comes closer and closer and finally they touch together by the ionized air in between which create a short circuit between the live and the outer terminal so that can be actually that can actually be spotted by pressing in the button pressing press and hold the button and the fly sweater will just try to pop without any bugs actually in in it the fly sweater will keep on popping without any bugs in it that is a clear indicate indicator indicator that the dielectric breakdown has occurred and at that point it is it is much better to just throw away in this case i i fixed it partially by cutting away some of the uh, pressure points over here and also by inserting a piece of plastic there it temporarily fixed it but it is not worth doing it i'm, I'm going to salvage what i can from this and i'm going to throw this away 
or if you want, really want to fix it the only way is to get a replacement head and use the same circuit with it, which is equivalent of buying a new fly sweater on its own so I hope that uh, I, I, co I covered everything uh, that is related to troubleshooting the mosquito bat and there are a few points that I missed like checking the switch for continuity those are basic tests that I, I think I don't need to specifically tell that people to check for the check continuity for the switch because not this one but this switch can uh, sometimes get bad even though they feel okay they press they make the sound okay that does not mean that they can they, they uh, they're actually good in this case I've shorted this together but that's because this switch is bad also so you have to check for that kind of stuff yeah I think that is the complete uh, troubleshooting guide for it so if you have if I missed anything you can tell me what I missed in the comments below you can ask any doubts if you have any if you like this video keep it give it a thumbs up if you don't like it give it a thumbs down and I will make a separate video for this voltage multiply section alone because that section alone is worth worth its own video so thanks for watching see you in another video